بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم احمد و نسلی علیہ رسول الکریم ویلکم ٹو دس پروگرام پرسنٹیڈ بائی دا ایم بی ٹی وی اینڈ دس پروگرام از ٹائٹلڈ اسلامک اویکننگ اینڈ وی ہیو ویری پرومیننٹ قاری اینڈ قاری فرام کینیڈا ہز نیم از عمران خان اینڈ عمران خان واز اوریجنلی بورن ان حیدرآباد بٹ ہی موو ٹو سعودی عربیا اینڈ He was uh, exposed to all the prominent Qaris uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia, in, in the Haramain. And uh, uh, as a result, he has acquired a lot of skills and knowledge uh, with regard to reciting Quran in the, prof- prof- in the proper manner. And thereafter, in, moved to Canada. And then uh, now you are citizens of Canada. And the most important thing I would like to highlight about uh, Brother Imran Khan is that uh, he is a presenter at the Peace TV. and uh, his programs are uh, broadcast over 45 countries and uh, uh, so we would welcome uh, we will be a very warm welcome to the Maldives and uh, to this program thank you so much yeah, it's a great pleasure to be here yeah and uh, we would like to um, find out from you and uh, you know uh, share your, your your knowledge with regard to the purpose of creation uh, some of our youth they are not very clear about why we've been created uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So could you please uh, elaborate on that? Sure. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this uh, great uh, honor and pleasure to visit the uh, beautiful country of Maldives. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers of MVTV and the Islamic Foundation of uh, Maldives uh, to get a chance to share some of the thoughts that may benefit our community and youth in general. The topic at hand, uh, purpose of creation, in fact, is a very big topic. But uh, given the limited uh, time slot uh, we have, we'll try to see if we can cover some of the most basic points, hoping, inshallah, that it will clear their doubts and clarifications. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in uh, the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. The translation that I have not created mankind and jinn except for worshiping me. So. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explicitly stating that we human beings have been created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the word worship, ibadah, is again a very broad term. It doesn't uh, necessarily mean that you just pray and you fast and you observe, uh, you know, the month of Ramadan fasting, you pay the due zakah and when you have the opportunity and the ability to go and perform hajj. No, it is much more beyond that. In order for us to understand uh, the total picture of the purpose of creation and the concept of uh, ibadah, we have to understand a little bit of background. Think of the fact that for every single thing that is amongst us, in front of us, if there is a machine, for instance, a computer, The computer has been created by man. Yeah. And what are its uses? I'm sure that uh, we are well aware of it. Yeah. We can use it for helping us in our lives. We can use it for word processing, for typing, and for communicating using the World Wide uh, Web, so on and so forth. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually, before the creation of mankind, He discussed this matter with the two creations before human being. And it is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah that the angels and the jinn were present. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahi rahman rahim وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ When the Lord talked to them, and said that I, in Nija'ilun, I am going to make something as a vicegerent, as an ambassador on earth. 
the immediate reply that came from the angels and the jinn was, Oh Allah, are you going to create something that will create fasad and that will, you know, create bloodshed on earth while we have the complete authority to only worship you? Because mind you, a human being and jinn are the only creation who have the faculty of either doing or not doing, which means we have a choice of doing or not doing or accepting or not accepting. But malaika, angels, they don't have that faculty. And the jinn also don't have. Jinn do have. Mm. That's why we have the good jinn and the bad jinn. Mm. Right? We have the Muslim jinn and we have people who are not from the Muslim faith. So that's why the ayah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Right. So it doesn't mention malaika. Right. So malaika are the only creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have been created only for that purpose. Yes. So it's just like an on-off switch. Yeah. That if an angel has been created for taking care of rain, that's his job. He's going to take care of it. He cannot refuse it. Right. But as far as mankind and jinn are concerned, it's a little bit different matter. Now, if I offer something to somebody, they may say, you know what? I don't like vanilla ice cream. I like chocolate ice cream. So it's a matter of choice. Yeah. Similarly, when this matter was presented in front of the jinn among the angels, they did not like the idea initially. The response was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He said that I know of something that you do not know. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that some of the people, some of the humankind and the jinn, they are going to make ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 100%. And at the same time, shaitan, because one of the jinn who did not accept was none other than shaitan. So what did he say? He said, you know what? I don't like this idea. And he got very hurt when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the jinn and the malaika to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam when he was created. So you see, I'm taking from a little bit of background. Once we understand the background, it's going to be easier for our audience and especially for our teenagers and youth to understand the purpose of our existence and also the creation. So having said that, uh, further it says in the same page, in the same passage, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. Everybody do not have any problem doing sajda, prostration, except one of the jinn who rejected and said, I'm not going to bow down. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, why not? He says, خَيْرٌ مِّنْ I am better than him. He says, why? خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ It says that I've been created from fire and he is created from clay. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is my order, you have to do it. But he doesn't accept it because it is a matter of ego, consciousness. Right. Mm -hmm. The minute that comes into anybody, then we are destroyed, we are finished. Ego. E e exactly, ego. So it's a very dangerous thing. You can say it pride also. The pride, pride yes, yeah. de definitely. It's very dangerous, uh, yeah. Takabbur, mm, takabbur. Horur, all these things. But now, on the other hand, after Adam alayhi salam is created, look at this beautiful model that we can learn from this same passage. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders Adam alayhi salam and his wife, Hawa alayhi salam, to live in paradise. And they live very happily and they enjoy their time. Mm -hmm. But now shaitan, you know, promises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one more thing. He says, Ya Allah, give me opportunity until the end of time. I'll make sure that I'm going to misguide every single person until the last, you know, the event that happens before the day of Qiyamah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, fine, I give you the opportunity. So now, Adam salam and Hawa salam, they're busy and all of a sudden he comes in a different form and he attracts them. He say, you know, Allah has asked you not to eat from that particular tree and such and such. You know the reason why? And he's trying to actually, you know, seduce them in such a way that, you know, if you eat that, uh, perhaps, you know, you're going to live here forever and 
so many other because reasons. Because that particular tree, Allah SWT said not to. Touch. Exactly. So that's why he wants Adam and Islam and Hawa to touch that tree. Right, but he's giving <coughs> a reason. Yeah. Adam and Islam was okay before that. Mm -hmm. But when he said, okay, perhaps it is for this reason, now immediately his mind started to think, oh, is it? Hmm, I really wonder why it could be. So finally he fell into the trap of the shaitan. Mm -hmm. Fine. Many of us do sometimes fall into the trap of shaitan and in just a few minutes, I'm going to come back and state a very beautiful hadith from our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So now Adam Alayhi Salam uh, got influenced by the uh, whispering of the shaitan and eventually he eats the fruit. When he eats the fruit, he immediately uh, hears the voice that he has made a mistake. Now here, he does not justify even for a second and immediately he goes down into sajda, prostration. Why? That is the most humble state of anybody. To bow down in front of someone else. In sajda, right? Yes, sajda, most definitely. And then when he did sajda, he asked forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, please forgive me. That if you don't forgive me, then I'm completely lost. You know, I don't have anybody who can help me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did accept his forgiveness. But on the authority and on the condition that he's going to go down to earth and he'll start his, you know, progeny and his life on earth. So now, Shaitan got more upset that I rejected the message, the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did not listen, and I was cursed. And from there, we have in Surah Al-Nahl, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فإذا قرأت القرآن فاستعيد بالله. So whenever we have to start the recitation of the Quran, we have to seek refuge in Allah سبحانه وتعالى from the Shaytan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Exactly, and we have to say it in a very nice way. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Or you can say. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Immediately you can feel that shaitan has gone, and he does go away because you know he doesn't like the Quran to be recited. So now, alhamdulillah, we can understand that Allah subhanahu wa taala created Adam alayhi salam to be his ambassador, to represent his deen, to represent his work which is to spread peace, justice, and everything on earth in a very nice way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him. And we see in the ayah that I started off the show with, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Now, it is now the time for Adam alayhi salam to inculcate in his progeny, in his children, the concept of ibadah. Worshipping Allah. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. Now, Basically, the word ibadah has to do with how we are going to become humble in front of our creator, our sustainer. There has to be a purpose of everything. The purpose for us to drink water is so that we can satisfy our thirst. The purpose of hunger, uh, excuse me, the purpose of, uh, you know, food is so that we can satisfy the for hunger. hunger. Yes. Exactly. Similarly, for every single thing, there is a purpose. Mm. Now, I have a watch. Mm. The purpose of watch is not so that I can look cool. Oh, you know, I can look like a hero. No. No. Because I can take a look at the time. Time, yeah. Okay, the purpose of this glass is because I can't see. But right. when I put on the glass, then I can see. So, what is the purpose of... The uh, purpose of creation, creation is so that we can realize that the eyes that are given to us, the ears that we have, the hands that we have. Imagine that we have... Five fingers, amazing five fingers. Now we can easily hold a fork, a knife, we can drive a car, we can catch somebody, we can shake somebody, but if one of the fingers are gone, then we cannot do that. Yeah, so we'll take a small break from now and then we'll come back very soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.